In this section, I'm going to talk about how the orchestrator goes and starts a container, and that container loads the container image on one of the cluster's PCs or virtual machines. As you can see on this slide, I have a PC or a virtual machine here in the middle, and it has a kind of a file system, which we would call the local registry. This is where container images would exist. And initially, the local registry is empty. That is, there are no container images on it. And then, if you're using Docker containers, uh, or Docker is the technology for deploying containers, then you would have a Docker daemon, or some kind of daemon or agent, running on this machine. Uh, the Docker daemon typically listens on ports 2375 and 2376. Um, for network requests that are coming in to tell the daemon what to do. Then we have this container image registry here on the far right. This is usually some external registry where you go and you upload your images to. Uh, an example of this would be Docker Hub. So let's say that we have taken our service A ver uh, version 1 container image and loaded it into this registry, and we've loaded the service B uh, version 3 and the service A version 2, and we're just uploading these various images into this container image registry, which is usually a network service somewhere in a network. Sometimes cloud providers provide a, a container image registry within the data center itself. So if you're using a public cloud provider and this is a virtual machine within that public cloud, it doesn't have to leave the data center in order to request an image, container image. It can go within the same data center, grab that image, install it onto a PC or VM, and then boot it up. On the left-hand side here is your orchestrator of choice. Um, this is typically something like a containers as a service um, orchestrator, where it's offering containers, right? A way of deploying containers, and the container images contains your service code. And usually the orchestrator is going to invoke the Docker client. This Docker client knows how to talk to the Docker daemon by making network requests using these ports that I've mentioned already. Um, it, you could, of course, manually test all this stuff out. If you can sit on some client machine of your own and pretend you're an orchestrator by executing a Docker run, and then you give the container image information over here. So let's just say that you've said to your orchestrator that you wanted to go and create a bunch of virtual machines in the cluster, and you want all those virtual machines to go and load the service A v1 container image into a running container on those VMs. So the orchestrator is going to create all the VMs, and then it's going to execute the equivalent of this Docker run once per VM. Uh, in this case, I'm only showing what happens on one of those VMs. The request comes in to the daemon. The daemon then looks in the local registry to see if the image that you want to start, service A v1, exists. In this case, it does not exist in the local registry, since it initializes itself to being empty. And so then the Docker daemon goes and makes a call out to the um, external container image registry service and says to it, I'm looking for this service A v1. That container image then downloads across the wire into the VM and is placed into the local registry. So now that image is on the machine. But it's not in a running container yet, just the image has been placed into the local registry. So the next thing that happens is that the Docker daemon goes and creates a new container on the VM and loads that immutable image into the container. So these uh, blue boxes here represent the executable, the libraries, and the runtimes that you might have. I just didn't show them on the slide. Um, and now you have a container on this VM that's running that particular service uh, with all of its dependencies completely self-contained. In the future, a, you, know, you might want to run another service, possibly on the same VM, so then the orchestrator might say, well, I want to go and run a different service. Again, the daemon, the request is made to the daemon, the daemon checks the registry, local one, doesn't see it, goes out to the container image registry, downloads it, and then pops it up. If for some reason this container went down or crashed or maybe it was purposeful, you scaled down and so the container went away, then if you decide to scale up in the future, the orchestrator could tell the Docker daemon to create another container with this image in it. Obviously, the Docker daemon will see the local registry and because the image is there, it won't have to go to the container external container image registry, it can just go and create a new container with that image. And so the container starts up very, very quickly after the very first time. 
All right, so uh, that gives you a sense of how the orchestrator uh, does its stuff. And now we'll, uh, oh, one more thing to add on that is that the orchestrator can also restrict the container's RAM and CPU usage. That is another feature of a container, not the container image, but of the container, is that when you create a container, you can put some resource governance on it. And you can specify, or you can tell the orchestrator to specify, that when this container is running, this is the amount of CPU utilization it's allowed to take advantage of. Or this is the amount of RAM that that container is allowed to use on this machine. So that's another nice feature about containers, is that they support this resource governance.